All right, thanks for the help from a retired Boeing engineer and Blanco Lirio viewer, former flight controls engineer at Boeing. I think we have an answer to the question, the most often asked question on the ongoing series of videos on the Air France 11 botched go around. What happens on the Boeing 777 if you split the control column, who has control of the aircraft? And that's a good reminder to check your subscription and notification setting for this channel because this has got to be at least the third video in, in the series of videos I've done on the Air France 11 situation alone. If you want to stay current and qualified on what's going on here on the Blanco Lirio channel. Now remember when discussing the Air Force 11 situation, the guys did a go around and then they began struggling, fighting over the flight controls between the two pilots and they fought so hard that they broke away or decoupled the flight controls via this mechanism right here. And for a while, when they described what happened later, once they got the aircraft back under control, they said the aircraft controls were not responding. The aircraft was doing whatever it wants to do. So let's go through this and see just exactly what the aircraft was doing or trying to do. So first off, here's a an excellent description of the breakaway assembly. And you can see now how simple this system works. The, between the two torque tubes, between the two columns, you have this spring-loaded breakaway in this cam here. And so if you pull a 50-pound difference, pull or push a 50-pound difference between the two columns, the control columns will separate via this cam and roller mechanism, and they'll continue to operate separately. This is designed to be in the event of a jammed column or a jammed flight control, not necessarily fighting over the aircraft as we found out in the Air Force 11 or the Air France 11 case. And then if you get the two columns lined back up, bam, the uh, roller snaps back into the cam and they begin working together again. But this is a fly-by-wire system on the Boeing 777. So how does that affect the computerized flight controls? Uh, let's see. Now, where did my thing go? Dang it. Well, let's wing it. Let's give it a go. <laughs> All right. There's a series of transducers located at the base of the control columns that picks up the control inputs for uh, pitch and roll. There's also back drive actuators, which give the feel to the control column that makes the Boeing 777 feel so natural like a naturally flying airplane even though it's fly by wire that's all part of uh, the 737 max issue mcas and all that but that's a whole different story the whole idea of mcas was to make the max feel like earlier versions of the 737 with fly by wire you just produce that feel electronically via the computers and the back drive actuators all right, back to the 777. So these force transducers take the analog signal from the control column into the ACE, the actuator control electronics box here. This box takes that analog signal, turns it into a digital signal, sends it to this bus. This is a three-way bus. Everything is triple redundancy in any of these airliners. Here, this this now digital signal is mixed with the air data inertial reference unit and the secondary attitude air data reference unit, the ADARU and the SARU, plus the um, air information management system, you know, all the stuff we put into the type into the computer. Takes that digital signal, sends it over to the um, primary flight control computers, the primary flight control computers. You keeping up with all this? Uh, take all this information in and create a a, a flight control output, send that output back through the bus, back to the ACEs, and then finally convert that new digital signal after it's all been mixed out to the PCU, the power control unit that actually moves the flight control. All that happening at the speed of light. And it's just amazing how well the Boeing 777 acts and feels like a natural flying aircraft despite all this electronics going on fly-by-wire electronics going on behind the scenes so the idea of having the breakout mechanism is in the event a control column gets jammed that's where the book says 
By the way, this is way above and beyond anything that any pilot would ever get involved with in the Boeing 777. It took a Boeing engineer to reach out to me to give me the information to help explain all this. So in the event of a jammed control column, the book says you should have enough control to continue to control the aircraft. So let's say, for example, the left control column jams. Well, you'll still have all the transducers on the right control column, but I think it's only going to give you partial control input, not the full control input as if you had uh, both control columns working. So from that, you can deduce, well, what happens if two pilots are fighting over the system and one is pushing and one is pulling? Well, if they pushed and pulled an equal amount, I suppose that would neutral out to a, a null input or a zero input and nothing would happen. And that's the way the Air France 11 pilots described the way the 777 was handling once they had decoupled the controls. Here's the written description of the primary flight control system if you want to freeze frame that and go read through all that. Here's some detailed information on the Air Inc. 629 buses, the three buses, command lane, standby lane, monitor lane. And remember too, the aircraft always needs to know what law are we in? Are, are we in normal law, alternate law, or direct law as they call it in the Airbus world? I'm not sure what exactly you call it in Boeing world, but a fly-by-wire system has different levels of redundancy and um, a way to fail elegantly via these flight control buses and the different laws allowed by the flight control system. Here's a written description of how these three lane buses work. Here's a more detailed description of specifically on the elevator control, how this works with the torque tubes and the breakout. And here it mentions six position transducers. So there's six trans transducers at the base of the control columns. Change flight control column commands to analog electrical signals for pitch rate rate sensors measure the pitch rate and that goes into the works that's what it all sounds like to us pilots but if you're a boeing engineer you got this all sorted out so feel free to freeze frame any of those uh, references, the written references there, if you want further guidance on how all of this works, the amazing fly-by-wire flight control system on the Boeing 777 aircraft. Thanks so much for your support of this channel and for those folks, the retired folks that reach out to this channel that get us this kind of fascinating behind the scenes information. Especially the folks over on Patreon that make this content possible. We'll see you here.